Hello everyone and welcome to your 89th Cocoa programming tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to be talking about how we can securely store a password entry inside of Keychain and then retrieve it using what we learned in the previous tutorial using local authentication. And that will allow us to use Touch ID to retrieve the password from the secure location of Keychain. So again, Keychain is Apple's way of basically securely storing passwords, right? And they provide some API for you to essentially store these password entries into Keychain and then you can retrieve those and you can retrieve them either using your system password or you can retrieve them using Touch ID. And that's what we're going to be doing in this video is building off of what we previously learned in the lesson 88 and we're going to store and retrieve using Touch ID. Okay, so the application that you see in front of you is pretty straightforward, but of course, all of this code will always be on a GitHub link. So if you need to just, you know, <laughs> find the, the end result, feel free to find that in the description. But the application itself so far is quite simple. There's a label that's gonna be my status label. There's an entry field that I'm going to type passwords into and then store them. When I hit store entry, it's going to store that value into Keychain. And when I hit read entry, it's going to try and read it. So as this works today, if I uh, type something in, I can type, you know, uh, password, and then I can hit store, and that will store the entry inside of Keychain. If I have no text, it's going to attempt to remove the entry. And then lastly, if I go to hit read entry, it's going to prompt me with that prompt that we talked about in the last tutorial for trying to access uh, your Touch ID, and then you can use that to read the entry. Now, uh, this is great, but we haven't actually implemented the keychain part, so that's what we're going to do next. Uh, just as a brief overview before we jump into keychain, though, this is what the store entry action looks like. So if there's no string in the entry field, we're just going to remove the entry. And then if there is something uh, typed by the user, we're going to create a new entry with that uh, new text effectively replacing the old one. All right, the other thing was the read entry call, and read entry is pretty simple. It's what we did previously where we create an LA context. We try to evaluate a particular policy. In this case, it's going to be just any authentication using password or, or biometrics, but you could specify to only use biometrics if you wanted. And then there's this new call which is going to use a, a secure access control. Um, option basically to specify how we should prompt for access control and we'll talk a bit more about this in a bit but essentially this call is what's going to actually prompt um, prompt you to actually uh, use your touch ID um, and then when we have a success for, for that we're going to go back into keychain and load that particular uh, value using this context that we just uh, authenticated all right so with that said, uh, let's go ahead and check out what Keychain has. So I'm going to go over to our Keychain helper here. And right now there's this only, only this one call to access this secure access control. And this essentially defines how the user can access the item. So the item in Keychain, that is. So we're only allowed to access it when the device is unlocked. And then I've specified that this will, will work for any kind of user entry um, access. Now, if you want to find out more of the options, you can see the uh, the access flags. And uh, there's a bunch of different ones, but one of them uh, that you might want to specify is to only use uh, biomet biometry data, um, basically that, to use Touch ID, for example. But user presence will allow you to use the, the password or Touch ID, basically anything that uh, you can allow to access your system. Okay, so that's what I've specified for the access control. And uh, now what we're gonna do is implement some of these methods for Keychain. So the first one that I wanna implement is the remove method. And so we're gonna call this remove with a key and a string. And basically the key is going to identify the entry that we have in the Keychain helper. I've defined this key in the view controller, which I would argue maybe it's not that great of a place to define this kind of thing. Um, but Perhaps you might want to move this into your keychain helper, but it depends. If you have sort of multiple ways that you might want to retrieve your keychain items, then uh, perhaps you want to have various keys or perhaps uh, other ways like emails or something to identify the entry. But um, 
that's where that key is for now. And we're going to just currently pass it in to this keychain helper so that in theory, we could use keychain helper in other applications that we might use. All right. So uh, with that said, we're going to go ahead and try to make this remove entry. And to do a remove for keychain, there's this call called suck item delete. And it takes this dictionary of uh, this basically security query that will define how you're going to query keychain and anything that matches that query, we're going to delete those items. So that's essentially how that works. And we just need to define the query and the query is just a dictionary. And the dictionary is going to look like this. So we're going to have the first one is uh, the, the class of item basically that you're storing. And this is going to be for us, uh, it's a generic password. And then there's another entry, which we're going to call uh, the attribute account. And this is really just going to be matching the key that we pass in. So this is really just identifying the actual entry. And this is really enough to identify, you know, we are specifying any basically any entry that is uh, given this particular account key is going to be deleted. That's really what we're specifying here. Okay, and the last thing is this needs to be a CF dictionary. So we're going to try and uh, bridge that to a dictionary type. And then we're going to use that query. All right, so that's removal. Now, uh, we really can't see removal unless we have creation. So let's go ahead and do that as well. So we're going to have another method called create. Uh, and we'll go ahead and call it create entry, which is what I called it for this video. Maybe it should just be create. That's debatable, I guess. Um, so here we have the things that we want to actually store in the entry. So the key again is identifying the entry for us, and that's going to be our application key. And then the data is the password itself. So um, with that, we're going to basically do the same thing, but first we're going to call removal on the previous item. So first we're going to remove any items that were matching this before. And so that's the first step here. Then the next step is going to be actually calling uh, secure item add, not attribute add. And this basically is going to uh, allow you to pass in a query and then you'll basically return the status of uh, what this will do. So if this fails, you're going to get a return code uh, and actually that you need to add that return code. So the return code for these guys is this OS status. And so we want to return that and we'll see how that works in just a bit where uh, we want to see if we didn't have any error adding the item, right? Because if we fail to add the item, we want to tell the user about that. All right, uh, this last little parameter is going to be nil, but we still need to make the dictionary uh, like we made here. I'm going to go ahead and copy this dictionary over. So it's going to be a generic password. It's going to be the account. Um, and then we want to specify two other things. So one is the uh, access control. So we're going to have uh, access control. And this we're going to define as the same one that we're using to actually uh, prompt the user for. So what this actually means is that if you specify a different access control, let's say, for example, you specified an access control here that only allowed biometrics, but then the user authenticated using their uh, system password instead of the, the biometrics like touch ID or face ID, that means that you actually won't, uh, you won't, you won't get this item out. Um, you're going to it's basically just not going to match it because you needed to unlock it using uh, touch ID. So make sure that however you're prompting your user to actually access this item matches the access control that you're specifying for this item. All right, with that, uh, we're going to have then um, basically this uh, last step, which is to actually store the value. So this is the data blob that we're passing in here, and that's going to contain the password or the phrase that we're storing in our video today. All right, so that should be it for uh, those two. So we have create and remove, and let's go ahead and integrate those in. So uh, removal is going to be here where we have an empty string. We're going to remove the previous entry. And then for creating, we're going to create the entry. The uh, string value we're going to encode as data. So we're going to get an, a UTF-8 representation, and then we're going to encode that just using data. 
And then uh, we're going to get back the status of that. So I'm uh, gonna change this naming here to be result. And uh, basically, actually this probably should be, well, yeah, use it result. And uh, from here, we're gonna basically check to see what the OS status was. And there's an OS status called no error, which is what you wanna check against to see if you had no error. And if there's no error, then we can say that the entry was stored. Otherwise, we will say that it failed. So we're gonna go ahead and run this. And we'll see that uh, this is going to be, so let me just go ahead and uh, we'll make password and we'll hit store entry and we got that the entry was stored. So that's good. That probably means that there was uh, a successful creation of that key. The last step that we have to do obviously is figure out how we can load this entry. So we'll do that in just a sec second. But one thing I need to point out before we move on any further is that um, to actually access keychain in your application, there's one very important step that you need to do or else you will actually get errors uh, when you go to create or remove these entries. And that step is to actually add the capability of Keychain. So uh, this is kind of a weird thing, but if you go into your Lesson 89 here, under, under Assigning Capabilities, uh, you actually need to add the ability of Keychain Sharing. So to do this, you just go up to Capabilities, you'll type in Keychain, and right now it's not there, but actually let me just go ahead and delete the entry so that you can see this in action. So if we go ahead and there we go, we can see now when we go to add a capability, keychain key sharing is an option. I'll just double click that and now I have access to keychain sharing. We don't need to add any groups here because we actually aren't really sharing anything across keychain groups. We just wanna have access to keychain, but uh, I guess we actually need to add this capability into the application. All right, so now let's go back to our view controller here and see what the last part is that we need to implement. So the last thing is the load call. And I actually already have this sort of uh, filled out. So I'm going to go ahead and just fill this in um, like so. And I'll obviously go through it here with you briefly to understand what, what it's doing. So we have a load call. It's taking that key like we had before. It's going to then take an LA context, which is going to have authenticated the user. And this is actually what Keychain is going to use to understand whether you authenticated the user or not, right? So uh, that's important that we, we have this in here and that we've authenticated it uh, because if we just pass in a blank LA context, it's not going to authenticate anything. So it's pretty simple or pretty similar rather to the previous calls. We have the class, we have the key, uh, we want to return data. We only want to match one item. So we only want to get a return of a single entry. I mean, we shouldn't really have any more than one entry anyway, but it is in theory possible that we could create more than one entry if we don't remove them. Um, so we only want one of them. And then uh, the last thing is that we want uh, the context for uh, our LA context to be passed in. That will prove that we authenticated the user. And then we want to say that we don't want to actually um, bring up another authentication API. So if we passed in a context that hadn't already authenticated the user, we actually don't want to add, we don't want to bring up another context. If you didn't do this, you could actually just call this uh, without the skip, and it will actually bring up uh, an authentication API based on this context. So it's kind of up to you, but that's kind of how I specify this uh, so far. Then uh, from there, once you've done that, there's a call for getting the data out of Keychain, which is a uh, sec item copy matching. And basically, we're just going to pass the query, trying to find a matching item in Keychain. And then we're going to get back the data from Keychain using uh, this uh, address here. And then here, we're going to see if the status was, or the result, right, of OS error. If it's not an error, we will return the data as our result. If not, we'll return nil. All right, so that's basically it. Uh, so let's go ahead and go back to our view controller here. And in this entry, we're just gonna uncomment out what I had previously done. So here we're just basically saying if we had a success for authentication, we're gonna go and load the key using that keychain key that we defined above in our view controller, passing in the context that we evaluated, and then we should get back the data. And again, remember that the data was encoded using UTF-8 in data, right? So we should decode it in the same way. We're decoding it using UTF-8, and uh, then we should have the result. So let's go ahead and check this out to see uh, 
if we successfully did this. So we're going to go ahead and uh, store, uh, this will be our new password. We're going to store this entry. We're going to read this entry and I'll use touch ID to authenticate. And there we go. Our result is new password like so. If I hit store entry with nothing, this should remove the entry. And if I try to read the entry again, we can see that we actually get an error uh, telling us that we failed to, you know, basically read this entry. So that's how we can use uh, Keychain and how we can access it using our Cocoa applications. Hopefully that was quite informative on how you can store uh, entries securely into uh, Keychain. Again, you never want to store passwords just in an open text file, right? That's extremely dangerous for anybody that uh, is going to try and access your passwords. You always want to store them securely and uh, the easiest place that you can store them securely is within Keychain. And it gives us some nice uh, sort of integration with the rest of the system if we use LA Context to evaluate uh, that value. All right, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I will see you in next week's tutorial as well. See you then. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel, give this video a like, and share it with your friends. Ways to contribute and additional information are in the description. I'll see you next week.